Good morning. It's good to be in the Lord's house with you today. It's a, another beautiful day out there. We had uh, our Knobles Day yesterday at the park, and uh, we had 28 people that were there, and uh, the weather cooperated. Everybody had a really good time, and so it's, uh, it's something we're going to plan on doing again next year, and uh, it's, it's always it's such a family-friendly park, and, and the, just the drive up there is so beautiful. But it's good to be here with you today in the Lord's house. Uh, um, you know, I know that uh, everything that we go through throughout the week, the things that challenge us, the things that we think that we need to worry about, uh, we need to just start uh, focusing on Jesus and say, you know what, I, I know no matter what, God, you're with me this week, and uh, you have all that I need, and uh, he truly does, and, and so God is so good. Uh, a few announcements. I, I have the, uh, many of you know, but uh, Ben and Joy Heckman are going to be moving away. And yes, I'm sad. I'm going to miss them. But we, we certainly wish them well on their journey on the next uh, phase of uh, God's plan for their lives. And uh, they have been our friends and uh, companions here at Zion. And I, I know that they will be a blessing in another church. But we're certainly going to miss them. If you have opportunity to wish them well. You can see them after the service today. Um, this uh, Wednesday through Friday, they're going to be packing uh, the, the food packages. The food giveaway is this Saturday uh, from 8.30 uh, to, to noon, and uh, they're going to be giving us school supplies as well. Uh, so we need to remember to uh, be praying for our students and teachers and bus drivers and everybody going back to school for their safety. And uh, boy, what a busy time that is, an exciting time for the children and adults alike, I'm sure. And... Uh, and kind of a return to some normalcy. It's kind of been nice to, to have the summer and uh, have a little more downtime and free time. And uh, we march into fall and uh, all of those things. And before we know it, we'll be in Advent. And so uh, I look forward to that season as well. Um, next Sunday, uh, uh, I will be away. Phyllis and I are off this coming week. And uh, Bob Fritz will be our guest pastor, uh, guest speaker for uh, next Sunday. And so we we'll, Look forward to all that God has laid upon his heart to share with you. Uh, you know, I was thinking this morning, uh, Nancy Geis has been coming to the 8 o'clock service, and I was looking at her, and I was thinking, well, how wonderful it is to have, uh, you know, children and grandchildren, and in some cases, great-grandchildren, to be able to sit with her in church. And, and I thought, you know, I would give anything uh, to be able to sit with my grandma in church again, uh, or to be anywhere with her again, or, or my mom, for that matter, uh, I know at the park yesterday, there was a, a woman that uh, it reminded me of my mom, and I thought, you know, I look forward to that glorious reunion one day, but boy, the pain is real, you know, the missing, and uh, yet, and, and so I guess that what I'm trying to say is don't take for granted all that we have today, for tomorrow we might not have those opportunities. Uh, the the altar flowers are presented to the glory of God by Nancy Geis in memory of her parents, Paul and Elizabeth Kunkelman. Uh, the bulletin is presented to the glory of God in honor of the 90th birthdays of Ethel Hughes on the 18th and Reverend Bill Hughes on the 26th. They were in church with us last Sunday. So happy birthday from the Zion Church family. And uh, if you enjoy working with children, we're going to be starting uh, back up our Fun and Faith Kids Club on Wednesday evenings on September 29th, and that runs from 6.30 to 7.30. If you can help Joan Croson, uh, she would love to, to find a spot for you. And she says, if you can't make it every week, don't worry. It still come whenever you're able to, and she'd be happy to find something for you to do. I know that the children really enjoy that, and uh, I'm looking forward to that starting back again. Um, as far as Bible study goes that I've been doing in the book of Revelation, I, I start my clinical studies back up on uh, Tuesday, October 5th, and so most likely I'm going to be doing uh, Bible studies on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. via Zoom. I'm checking with the group uh, that currently attend to see if that works with them, but uh, by all means, we, we'd love to have you join us, and at some point we'll be back together again in the building. Uh, I am looking forward to having some socials, perhaps, in the fall as we move forward, as Sunday school starts back up, and, and uh, that's an exciting time as well. Uh, I know that uh, we're going to be needing greeters when Sunday school starts. If you're able to, to be a greeter, you want to see Doug and uh, Doug Sewell, he'd be happy to, to sign you up for that. 
Uh, today is the, the deadline to, to get in the uh, newsletter articles that you have. So if you have any, you want to get those to uh, Rosalie. And we have a list of all of our pantry needs uh, on the insert as well. And so with that, uh, we have uh, our prayer of confession and call to worship by Doug Sewell. Let us pray. Gracious God, we confess that we are not careful of how we live. We waste our time doing things that are of no consequence, that do not show our love for you. Our days blur into unceaseless droning. There's often no rhythm to our lives. Fill us with your spirit. Energize us so that we can make the most of our time. We want to fill our lives with meaning so that our actions and our words are a joyful thanksgiving to you. We want to sing our love for you to all we meet. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. amen. And please join me in the call to worship, which is on page 628 in our hymnal, a responsive reading titled, I Will Be With You. This is what the Lord says, he who created you. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. I am the Lord your God, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. When you call upon me, I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the beauty of the day. We thank you that you woke us up and you, you got us here this morning, hopefully with a song in our hearts. We uh, pray, Father, that you would uh, just bless us as we worship you this morning, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, fill us up with your spirit, that we are eager to hear all that you have for us during this time and equip us as we go out into the world this week to be salt and light for your kingdom, Father, for these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Our opening hymn today is hymn number 104, O oh, Worship the King, 104. O oh, worship the King, all glorious above, and gratefully sing his wonderful love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. Oh, tell of his might and sing of his grace, whose robe is the light, whose canopy space, his chariots of wrath a deep thunder clouds form, and dark is his path on the wings of the storm. Thy bountiful care, what tongue can recite, it breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. Frail children of dust and feeble as frail, in thee do we trust, nor find thee to fail. Thy mercies, how tender, how firm to the end. Our maker, defender, redeemer, and friend. All hail to the King, in splendor enthroned. Let we bring thy wonders make known returning victorious great conqueror of sin king 
us our victory will win. Amen. You may be seated. As always, we uh, greatly appreciate everyone that contributes time, talent, and treasure uh, to the Lord's work here at Zion and through the work that's done through the universal church throughout the world. Uh, you know, we need God and we need one another, and together we are the uh, pulpit microphone. And, uh, this is a battery issue this time. Anyway, uh, Thank you for all that you do, and uh, there, no matter uh, who you are, uh, God has created us in his image, and he's given us all various gifts and talents that can be used for his glory. So if you're able to help in any way, small or large, uh, see me or see uh, one of the other leaders within the church, and I'm sure we can uh, find a place for you. But uh, thank you for all that you do. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for uh, the gift and the giver. I pray you bless them and uh, continue to use us mightily that we can proclaim the good news that Jesus lives and because he lives, we can face tomorrow without fear. We can face tomorrow with the realization that we are your children dearly loved and so thank you, Father, for all that you do. We pray that you would just continue to meet all of our needs wonderfully in Christ Jesus. We pray that you would enlarge our vision as a church, that we might be effective in reaching men and women, boys and girls for Jesus. It's in his precious name that we pray. Amen. praise him today. It fits the front of the bulletin, uh, Jesus Loves Me, and that is our, our praise him today. It's found on page 185 in your hymnal. It's probably familiar to most of us as since we learned singing it as a, a little child, and the truth is he does love us, and he has all that we need for life and life abundant. I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong, yes Jesus loves me, yes Jesus loves me, yes Jesus loves me. loves me, this I know, as he was so long ago, taking children on his knee, saying, let them come to me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. 
Jesus loves me, he will stay close beside me on my way. He's prepared a home for me, and someday his face I'll see. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Amen. Jesus does love us. He loves us so much that he laid down his life on the cross of Calvary. The scorn and the shame and the suffering and sorrow, he did it all eagerly for us. That he wanted us to be his brothers and sisters together and children of God, and that we are, and so we give him praise. I uh, want to remember Robin and Jim Lash. I know they're still having uh, some ongoing things that they're dealing with, and uh, we want to continue to keep them in prayer as I said, we want to remember the, the children and teachers and parents and bus drivers, you know, all that the school starts back up. It's an exciting time, and we certainly pray God's protection upon them. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Aaron Haynes uh, was a, a, a member of the church in Ohio that desperately needs a uh, liver transplant. Uh, the good news is they found a donor. Uh, to don, uh, to uh, give part of their liver to help him to have life, but he's really weak and sick. And so if you could remember a, a gentleman by the name of Aaron Haynes in your prayers, I know that that family would appreciate that. And uh, certainly everyone on our list and those that God lays upon our hearts and, and our minds. And, uh, you know, prayer is such a powerful tool. And I, I think it's one that's overlooked and underused today uh, because it's our, our very connection to a, a holy God, a God that has given us everything life and life abundant. Let us pray. Father God, we uh, come to you this morning and we, we are just so grateful for all that is ours in Christ Jesus. We pray, Father, for Robin and Jim Lash and Aaron Haynes. We uh, pray for, as uh, schools start back up all over the country, that you would uh, uh, just offer protection for our children and teachers and parents and bus drivers and everyone involved in that. We, we thank you, Father. It's an exciting time of, of learning and new friends and uh, reminiscing with old friends. And so, Father, uh, be with us as a country as we uh, get back to uh, children in school and uh, in, in the universities. And we pray that through this process of learning that they would just uh, continue to learn more and more of your love for them that is theirs through Jesus. We pray, Father, for families that have young children, that you would be with these families and just instill with mom and dad how important church is to help us to stay connected with you and with, with one another. And so, Lord, bless us in that endeavor as a church that we would continue to be eager to seek men and women, boys and girls, to share the good news of Jesus with them. Uh, we pray, Father, that you would be with each person on the prayer list, uh, we thank you uh, for Carol Phillippe's uh, continued healing. Be with her through this process. And uh, we celebrate with Reverend Bill and Ethel and the, uh, the birthdays. They both turned 90 this month. What a, a milestone of life. We, we thank you, Father, for their faithfulness and their love for you and for your church. We uh, pray for Ben and Joy as they uh, prepare to, uh, to transition to the next uh, stage of their life as they move away, uh, that you would help them in that process. I know that is a busy, busy time. And so, Father, give them all they need. Surround them with people and situations that will help this move to go smoothly. And we just thank you, Father, for their contribution here at Zion. We will we'll miss them, but we thank you, Father, that you have used them and will continue to use them in the next stage of their journey. Oh, Father, I pray that you would just continue to fill us with the fruit of the Spirit. Help us to have those Christ-like attributes that demonstrate that we love you and that we love one another. And so, Father, be with us as we strive to be more like him each day. We uh, pray for those in hospital and nursing care. We think of Ken and Evelyn Reed and Stosh Redke. We Pray for our shut-ins, Scott Hewitt and Miriam Kern and Joyce Organtini and our missionaries and the missions that we serve throughout the world, that you would be with them, Father. 
Uh, we do pray for a miracle of healing in Aaron Haynes' life. We pray, Father, that you would just continue to work with the doctors and everyone involved uh, at Cleveland Clinic that he could have healing of his physical body and through it all he and the family would have an extra measure of your presence. We pray, Father, that you would give us clean hands and pure hearts as we seek and serve you by faith. We truly, we lift up the needy, the helpless, the hurting, the lost, and those that mourn that they might find healing and wholeness in your presence. And we remember our military men and women throughout the world. We pray for our leaders, local and national. We pray for our president. We pray, Father, that they all would seek you for wisdom and for guidance and discernment as they seek to govern us that it would be pleasing in your sight. And so, Father, be with us and bless us this day as we worship and teach us to pray as Jesus taught the disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, it's always a, a blessing to uh, be here and to share the word of God with you. Uh, I, I continue to pray that, Lord, help me to have more and more love for your word uh, because uh, the word of God is truly life for us in, in this wicked uh, generation in which we live. And, uh, you know, we were uh, sitting around the picnic table yesterday and kind of talking about the condition of the world and, and how, you know, so many people are just really out there and they're far from God and, and they don't even realize that they're far from God. It's kind of like the Pied Piper just kind of leading everybody along astray and before they realize, you know, that it's calamity at the end and everything seems like fun and games until then. And, and so we desperately need God, we need one another, and this really is a, a refueling station where we come together to be re-energized and to work together to, to love and care for one another, and in some cases uh, to speak the truth and love, even gently to correct one another. But before we do that, we should really be working on, on us. Uh, you know, it, it's so easy to see the problems that other people have, and oftentimes we have a hard time being objective and looking in the mirror and seeing who we truly are. And as long as we compare ourselves to other people in the world, we can make ourselves look pretty good. But when you compare yourselves to God's holy standard, then we see we really are sinners saved by grace. Amen. Can I have somebody offer a prayer for the message today, please? Amen. Thank you, Bob. I, I appreciate that. You know, the, the reality is we were created even before the found, foundation of the world to, to know God, to love God, uh, to, to live a life that radiates his glory. You know, God is holy, therefore we're to be holy. That should be uh, uh, the thing that we strive for. And we're here to carry the message, the good news that Jesus lived, died, and rose again, and even now intercedes at the right hand of the throne of God on our behalf. And so we're saved to live in obedience to the Lord. You know, we're to strive to be more like our Heavenly Father. You know, and, and I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. We are to live and walk in a manner that's consistent with our calling in Christ Jesus. We should actually live the way that we believe. And if we believe all that the Bible says is true, then we should be living in, in that way, a life that seeks to honor God, and it's pleasing, and it's a life that is very attractive to, to other people in the world, and if the world desperately needs anything right now, it needs Jesus, it needs the love of God, and it needs God's people to be real, uh, to be transparent in how they live and what they do, and so people can say, wow, you know, there's something different about that person, and it's good, I, what, I want what they have. 
You know, we're condemned by the world because they say we're phony. All we want is their money, and we don't live what we say. And so you can understand why they're somewhat reluctant. And so as we continue on our, our study in the book of Ephesians today, you know, the Apostle Paul talked about in the first three chapters about the church and all these spiritual blessings that are, are ours that are kept for us in heaven. And when you stop to count your blessings and all that you have from God, it should bring you to a point of thank you. Thank you, God, for loving me so much and having all of this for me. And... Uh, you know, the other thing, he goes on to the next uh, three chapters, four through six, and he begins to say, if you are a follower of Christ Jesus, you should be living like this. And as, as I've said time and time again, Paul is a list maker. These are the vices or sins that you want to stay away from. And these are the virtues, those Christ-like characteristics that you should be incorporating in your life and have to more and more that, that you begin to be more like Christ and, and less like the sinful world around us. You know, it's easy to, to follow the crowd. It's, it's easy to, to, to chase after the things of the world and the sin that pleases so many. You know, grace was free, free for the asking. You can invite Jesus into your heart and he would forgive your sins and he would be the savior of your life. And that was a free gift, unmerited favor. It didn't cost you anything. It cost him everything. But being a disciple, well, that takes hard work. I wish I could tell you there was an easy button for that, but there's not. It takes a dedication to say, Lord, thank you for waking me up today. Let me live my life for you today. Let's do a little review before we jump into our scripture reading for this. Go back to chapter 4 and, and look what Paul was saying. In uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 6, uh, the Apostle Paul says, Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. Make every step to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace, for there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all, in all, and living through all. You know, he, he says, we're in this together. You know, he, he is in prison. You know, he's in jail, house arrest. And his thoughts are on the, the church at Ephesus because the people are living in a community that celebrates sexual sin. They've got shrines to celebrate, and people are living terrible, sinful lives. They're full of self, they're full of sin, and they celebrate it. And he's begging the people that have now come to Christ that, to say, we're all one. We're one together in the Lord and in God, who's over all and in all, and we should make every efforts to stay united through God's Holy Spirit. And, and the things that come out of our mouth should be God-honoring. You know, I, I think that as we, we live our days and, and we begin to enter into different things throughout the day, we should ask ourselves, is what I'm doing, would God be pleased with that? And, and would it be honoring God? And, and if the answer is no, then we might want to think about doing something else because it's like anything else. The more that you stay connected to things that are apart from God, the further and further away you get from God. Paul said in Ephesians 4, verses 30 and 32, he says, And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. You know, Paul has been pleading and, and begging and praying that God would bless the church at Ephesus 
that they would understand all that is theirs in Christ, that they could be filled to that measure of God that would overflow from their lives, that would protect them from the sinful world in which they live. You know, Paul talks about how terrible it was in the first century. I wonder what he would think about the 21st century. I, I don't think he could even begin to imagine it. Sometimes I can't even imagine it. I, I think that I fell asleep 40 years ago and I, I woke up to a nightmare. And it just seems to be getting worse and worse. And it seems like the world that we live in today, all the things that are terrible and sinful and hateful and bitter and rotten, people gravitate to and they celebrate and they love them. And all the things that are good and wholesome and right and godly, people don't want anything to do with. How sad. How sad a world we live in today. Well, that is going to set the foundation for our reading today. We're reading from Ephesians 5 today, verses 15 through 20. And Paul is talking about living by the Holy Spirit's power. He says, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but live like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. And give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I, I just love the way Paul has a real heart for the believers at Ephesus and the desire to see them live a, a life that not only glorifies God, but a life that blesses them because there's so many things that can that help them be off kilter. You know, he starts by saying, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. And, you know, the, the, the greatest fool, I think, is the person that says in their heart, there is no God. And they're out there. And they say, there is no God. And I think next to that is the fool that says they have all the knowledge that they need apart from the knowledge that God has for us. And he has the, the truth of all that we need. I, I told all my children when they were little and we gave them a Bible, I, I inscribed their Bible and said, everything you need for life is in here. Anything that you come across, God has a word for you. Don't depart from his word and don't depart from him. Be careful how you live. That's an intentionality, you know, thinking about it, you know, spending your energy living for the Lord and, 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 and really mapping out your week. You know, we, we map out our days, don't we? You know, I can tell you what I have planned for tomorrow at 7 o'clock. I'm going to be at uh, Fox Chase Golf Course. I'm going to be golfing with Ken Miller and, and a, few, a couple of other guys. They're all older than me and none of them sweat. Uh, I don't understand it. I, uh, I was dripping wet last Monday, and these guys don't sweat. I, there's something wrong with that. I don't, I don't, anyway, um, you know, we need to spend energy living for the Lord. And, and while I enjoy golfing and while I enjoy being with my wife and I have opportunities to do things that bring us happiness, I need to understand that I was created for a purpose. And that purpose is to know God and to love him and to proclaim him. That's your purpose as well. You're all missionaries, you know, and there is a world that is lost outside of our doors, in our families, in, in our neighborhood, and in our, our community, and in our workplaces, people that desperately need to know the love of Jesus. So we don't want to live like fools and just go with the flow, but we want to be wise. And wisdom is something that God promises us. In, in the book of James, verse Chapter 1, verse 5, it says, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Keep asking, God, give me wisdom to navigate this sinful world. And you know, where else do we find wisdom? We find it right in the Word, don't we? And you know, we should uh, get our face in, in the Word every day. You should have a systematic reading plan to read the Bible in a year or two or three years if you're, you like to really take your time and read it and meditate on it and pray on it and then begin to apply it. And the, the, the problem is that there are a lot of well-meaning people that are living like fools today because they're denying the truth. 
They, they, they have hearts for people, as we all do. We're to, to hate sin and, and love people. But, you know, we should care about what God thinks. And the reality is you can't live any way you want and expect the holy God to be happy about that. Now, listen, friends, I, I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying. If you have Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you are saved. Okay, If you made a genuine confession of faith and you've received Jesus, you are saved for all eternity. And Paul's talked about it earlier where a sign and seal of the Holy Spirit is our guarantee. But being a disciple, that is going to take intentionality. And that is going to take a, a focus on Christ to say, God, I am going to live for you in this wicked generation in which I'm, I'm living, no matter what. You know, separating ourselves from people places and things, things that hinder, sins that entangle us, things that keep us further from God, things that cause us to grow weary and lose heart, Hebrews 12. Verse 16, he says, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Like I said, he would be shocked to see what the 21st century has for us. Uh, and, I, and you know, sin is sin, people are people, We've just created new ways to sin. And the thing that is amazing to me today is that there are people that know what sin is and they don't care. They don't care if they sin or not and if it hurts God or hurts anybody else. And, and they're living for self. They're living for the world, a world that is fleeting and passing away and all too soon will be gone. And so, you know, make every effort and take make the most of every opportunity you have because we are living in evil days. Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 3 through 5 he says for a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and they'll look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and they'll chase after myths. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry that God has given you. I, I have a role to play and you have a role to play. And the truth of the matter is it, it breaks my heart that there are churches that in their love for people have watered down the word so they don't offend anybody. I don't want to offend God. I'm more concerned about what he thinks than what others think. And we should hate sin and love sinners. We're all sinners. But we can't change things to, to make it copacetic for a sinful world to live any way they want. And that's what's happening today, friends. We, we need to be praying for the church in this country and really throughout the world. You know, strangely enough, in other countries where it's illegal to, to pray or to have the word of God, uh, People are coming to the Lord in droves uh, in this country where we, we have, the, right now, we have the freedom to worship and it's harder and harder to see people coming today to the Lord because they're so entrapped with the things of the world, things that aren't going to last and things that aren't going to matter uh, the day that we meet our Savior face to face. He goes on in verse 17, he says, and don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. And I've been giving this some thought. You know, there are times that we probably are sinning and we're not even aware of it. And, and I, I think this is because of a lack of getting in the word and staying in the word and really understanding what God wants from you and I. And we need to understand what he wants so that we are intentional and purposely living each and every day for Jesus. You know, people condemn me you know, for being a Jesus freak or, or whatever. I'm good with that. I'm fine with that because the person that you serve is not the one that I'm serving. I'm serving the living son of God. And this is fantasy and it's foolishness to much of the world. So we need to make sure that we're thinking about how we're living and understanding every day what the Lord requires of us. What does he require? He requires us to walk humbly I love him, to be graceful and kind and compassionate. He has a plan, and everything we need is in there. It's like Prego. You know, everything's in there that we need. And it's a great combination 
to help us stay healthy in a sinful generation. Keep the, the word of God so that you can understand what the Lord wants for your life. And that's intentionality. It takes time. I wish I could tell you this was easy. And I know for myself that I've been working with some of the same things for years now. And I'm inching along little by little. But it has to be, you know, I want more of you, God, than I want anything else in this world. I want to love you more than anything. And Jesus even said that. You know, and, and we, we say, well, how can we love you more than loving our mother and father, our brother and sister? But the reality is, if we have that type of, of uh, mindset that God is our father and that he has for us the very best that we could ever have and that we want to live a life that pleases him, he's holy, we're to strive to be holy. And by getting in the word and by praying continually, it helps to have... Uh, Fertile ground for the Holy Spirit to live in us and through us. Paul says in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, he says, all scripture is inspired by God. It is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we're wrong and it teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to, pray, to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. And, and I think about that. You know, a lot of us today, we only want to read what we agree with in the Word. Well, I, that's for somebody else. That's not for me. And, and the reality is that's faulty thinking, and Satan loves that. He loves when we can begin to rationalize, no, I, I can, I'm okay in that area. I, I don't care what, what God says. And, and so everything that we need for life and life abundant is found in the Word of God. Paul goes on in verse 18 and he says, don't be drunk with wine uh, because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, we know we've seen people that are, have been extremely intoxicated and we've seen the impact on our highways and in our homes. And from a medical standpoint, we've seen the, the damage that uh, beverage alcohol does to people. You know, there are people who can have a glass of wine with their dinner and they're fine. Uh, but there aren't a lot of people that are able to do that. And most people, one is never enough, and, and there's not enough until everything is gone, your, your marriage, your hope, your life. And, and so Paul says, look, and you got to understand the context of verse 18, by the way. They had these, uh, these dinners that they would come together and they would meet, and they would have these celebration dinners before they would have the, the Lord's table, before they would celebrate communion. And people would uh, come and they would gather and they'd bring food to eat and they would bring alcohol to drink, uh, presumably wine. And by the time they got to the Lord's table, many of them were drunk. I mean, drunk. Can you imagine uh, tying one on and coming to church? I think it would be a good place to be, by the way, uh, because at least you know you, you're in the right place. But Paul's saying, look, instead, you know, that is... A, nothing but harm and ruin. Instead, fill yourself with the Holy Spirit. And the truth of the matter is there are many different ministries of the Holy Spirit uh, that we get, uh, that we enjoy the moment that we receive Jesus at conversion. But the filling of the Holy Spirit is an ongoing work of the Holy Spirit. And there are things that we need to do in our life to have that be a possibility. But let's take a look at some of the uh, functions of the, the, the Holy Spirit provides for the faithful follower of Christ Jesus. Number one, when we receive Jesus as Savior Lord, we invited him into our life. We asked him to forgive our sins, and he did. He shed his blood. It covers over all the sins. We received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, this is a work of the Spirit. It incorporates the believer into the body of Christ. We're born into a new family. Uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But we have all been baptized into one body by the Spirit, and we all share the same Spirit. We're all together in this. And there's no longer Jew or Gentile or black or white. We're all in the family of God through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, through the shed blood of Jesus. Then we're given the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit uh, it, it comes to us. He gives us comfort. He takes up residence. Uh, he empowers us for holiness, for worship, and for service. But here's the catch. If we keep putting more and more of the world into our lives, 
that guidance gets smaller and smaller, that voice is smaller and smaller, that indwelling is still there, but we're, we're ignoring it by the, the things we do, the way we live. Uh, Jesus said in John 14, 16, he says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you forever. This is yours. This, as, as a child of God, as a believer in Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit. We have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit uh, is the one who anoints to teach the child of God about the things of God. Now, we need teachers and pastors to, to share the word of God, to unfold it, but the truth of the matter is we can find a translation of the Bible that we can easily understand. I prefer the New Living Translation or the New International Version, and we can meditate and pray upon it. And you know the amazing thing for me? I've been reading the Bible for... 40 years now, going on 40 years, and every year a new light comes on and God says this. And I'm like, I never, I never realized that. And that is a work of the Holy Spirit. And Paul said earlier in Ephesians that the Holy Spirit is the sign and seal and the guarantee from God of our inheritance as his children and these blessings that are kept for us in heaven one day. Paul says in Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, he says, And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news, that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise God and glorify him. And so those are some of the ministries of the Holy Spirit. Now Paul is saying we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, I can remember, uh, it's a famous pastor, I can't remember what he said, uh, I can remember what he said, I can't remember his name, and someone says, well why do I have to continually be filled with the Holy Spirit? He says, because we leak. He says, you know, sin nature is in us, so we, we allow the world to get in, and the Holy Spirit is leaking out of us. So we need the desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit every day. Number one, we can start by confessing and putting away all known sins in our lives. That makes it easy for the Holy Spirit to, to fill us when we are putting sins away. Uh, in 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 9, he writes, this is the message we have heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light and there's no darkness in him at all. So we're lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but if we go on living in spiritual darkness, we are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus' the Son cleanses us all from sin. That's a promise from God. But if we claim that we have no sin, we're only fooling ourselves and we're not living in the truth. There are a lot of people today that are rationalized. I'm okay because I'm not like that person or this person. And they fool themselves and they truly are a fool by the definition that Paul is talking about. But if we confess our sins to him, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. And so if we want the Holy Spirit to, to continue to fill us, that we are more and more like Jesus and less like the sinful world, we need to begin to pray that God would purge us from the sin that has so easily drawn us further and further away from him. You know, you can't live a life where sin is condoned and expect to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, there are a lot of uh, Christians today that kind of wink at sin and say, well, you know, everybody does it, it's okay. And, and the reality is God hasn't changed his stance. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Sin is still sin. No matter how you package it or how you present it or how wonderful you make it out to be, it's still sin. And the more you condone it, the more you allow it in your life, the less opportunity there is for a filling of the Holy Spirit. And I, I know people that are filled with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, because there's something amazing about them. Nothing seems to, to jar them. They always just seem to be on an even kill. And they, they always speak love and they speak truth and grace and compassion. And they, they really care about people, you know. And that's what Paul is saying. You speak the truth in love and, and, and love, you know, like God has loved us. Forgive like Jesus has forgiven us. Number two, 
We need to yield ourselves completely to the control of the Holy Spirit. You know, wanting to be filled with the Holy Spirit is one thing. Being willing to live with that guidance is another altogether. It involves a surrender of our will, of our intellect, of our body, of our time, of our talent, of our treasure. Every area of our life needs to be open to his dominion. And I, I pray that all the time because we, we compartmentalize our lives, don't we? You know, so often we say, well, God, here you go. This is the shiny, bright, and good part of me, and this is what I want you to see. But no, I don't want you to see me here or there or here or there. And we have these closets that we want to keep God out of, as, as if we could. And, and the reality is we need to, to yield ourselves to God and say, God, I'm yours. Have, have your will in my life. You know, I, I've told you before, I, I felt called to ministry as a child, and I had a terrible fear of public speaking, and I just kind of said, God, no, that's not for me, and kind of put it on the back burner for years, and, and then um, I had a, a, a medicine that I was taking. Turns out I was allergic to it, and it had a higher dose than I needed, and I had a terrible seizure, and for about a year and a half, I could hardly talk or walk. Yeah, it was pretty bad, but I had a lot of time to pray. <laughs> And I did an awful lot of praying in that time. And I, uh, it was that time that, that God said to me, do you remember? And I said, yes. And I said, Lord, you open the doors and I'll go through them. And, you know, God did an amazing work in my life. My speech, and my mobility came back. And I signed up for seminary. And one door after another, after another, after another. Be willing to surrender yourself completely to the control of the Holy Spirit. He, he may not be calling you to be a pastor or a missionary in another country, but he is calling you to serve him here and now and where he's planted you. Paul says in Romans 12, 1 and 2, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable this is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Number three, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we need to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. You, you can't just peek in the Bible every now and again or, or, or hope that, that you're going to get it by osmosis. It, it, it takes time. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to my clinical studies in October, and I'm dreading it because I know I'm going to have a boatload of additional reading and writing to do, and yet I know the benefit that comes out of that. But I also know after years of studying the Word of God, the blessing that comes out of that. And I'm not standing here preaching at you or to you that I have arrived in any way. I know I'm going to complete it, be completed by Christ Jesus one day. I'm still working on it. But here's the thing. I know I need to work on it. We need to know that we need to work on ourselves if we want this filling of the Holy Spirit. Paul says in Colossians 3, which is very similar to this passage in Ephesians uh, 3.16, he says, Let the message about Christ and all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. Fourthly, we need to be emptied of self. Um, I can get a little cocky at times. It's got me in trouble a time or two. Just ask Phyllis. She'll tell you all about it. If you have, if you have an hour or two to listen, uh, she can let you know. Uh, but the, the reality is, you know, when we are full of self and full of the world, we act worldly. And we're full of greed and lust and envy and jealousy and hatred and pride. We need to empty those out of our lives. And we need to put in those Christ-like qualities that demonstrate that we truly are a child of God and, and then we can, we can praise God with our, our mouth and worship. We can praise him with a song in our heart and we can thank him for each day that he gives us. Paul says in Galatians 2.20, he says, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting the Son of God who loved me 
and gave himself for me. You know, the believer is, who's filled with the Holy Spirit is occupied with Christ. You know, it, it's a daily, moment-by-moment moment occupation that I'm a child of God and I, I need to live a life that glorifies my Heavenly Father. And, and that's our focus. And, and when our focus becomes like that, we find as we pray, God, fill me with your Holy Spirit, that he does and he allows us to do things we could never do in our own power. It takes work. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it, huh? The truth of the matter is, it's the, the best investment you can ever make. My heart breaks for families with young children. And the world is eager to teach them everything that's wrong. And here we are as a church to help them, to come alongside of them, to nurture and, and grow them in Christ so that their children can learn the truth. So that when they go into these secular schools and universities and say, oh, don't worry about God or there is no God, they know the truth. They need a good foundation and this is where it starts. This is why the church is so important in this world that we live in today. I pray for every member on our directory. I pray for them by name and I pour my heart out to God for each of them that have not been here in a while that they would come back, that they would see and desire to have more of God and less of the things that are shiny and bright out there that are deceiving the world today. Nothing wrong with having things. Don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. God knows what we need before we even ask, and he supplies those things. Paul in verse 19 says, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. You ever wake up with a song in your heart for the Lord? A lot of Sundays I just... Have a joy and look forward to, to coming to church and being with the body and, and, and worshiping God. And, you know, we, we sing hymns and at 8 o'clock service, we sing praise music and we worship God with our, our mouths and we worship God with our lives. And Paul closes uh, in verse 20, he says, And give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God for that doctor that wrote that prescription that harmed my body for a year and a half. I would not be where I'm at today had that not happened. I had a successful career at the Baltimore Sun, and I believed in God, but I certainly wasn't living the life he wanted for me. Thank God for everything. The Apostle Paul says, all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord, those that are called according to his purpose. And by, by the way, you're called according to his purpose, whether you know it or not. So we give thanks to God, but once again, that's a choice like all the other choices that we have each and every day. We make that choice to give thanks in all things because we love him who first loved us. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you for the love that is ours in Christ. These are hard words. These are challenging words because we uh, are living in a world that is contaminated by sin that has uh, polished it up and, and made it look attractive and desirable and everybody's doing it. And yet, Father, you desired it, that we would have more of you living in us through your Holy Spirit, that you would just fill us to an overflowing each and every day, that we would overflow our love for you and for one another, that we would hate sin and love the sinner. We would strive to be a reflection of your love in the world as we care for those in need. We come alongside of those that mourn, that we are able in and, and love to speak the truth and to gently to, to guide and to correct and to direct those that have strayed from your holy word. Oh, Father, I pray that you would do a new work here at Zion Evangelical Congregational Church in Moton, that you would not only enlarge our vision, but that you would bring our people back that you would uh, work in their lives to the point that they realize that they desperately need you, but they need the body of believers, a, a household of faith. I, it does my heart so, so much good to see my friends each Sunday. And so, Father, continue to work in our lives. And, and I know we have busy lives. I, I know we have a lot going on. We have vacations and illnesses and things that do keep us away. But help us to stay centered in Christ. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and help us to desire to have more and more and more of the filling of your Holy Spirit for these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
Our closing uh, hymn today is uh, 389, Spirit of the Living God, 389. Please stand and join me. joy to be in the Lord's house with you today to worship and to fellowship and to be fed on the word of God through the Holy Spirit. Grant us, O Lord, understanding minds that we might know how to live. Grant us discerning hearts that we might know the difference between good and evil and how we might live to please you. Grant us, O Lord, peace and prosperity all our days to the glory of your holy name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.